Welcome to Inspire Me with Jay. This is a podcast to inspire, uplift, show forth the love of God, and help usher in the spiritual awakening. Please like, subscribe to this channel, and share everywhere. Thank you. Please inspire me with Jay. I'm Jay Spillers. This is my guest, Kelly. Kelly, why don't you just tell how you came to the Lord real fast? Okay, I came to the Lord. Uh, this was way back in 1985. I was very, uh, very hardened in my unbelief. I had a very, very uh, rough background uh, about as far as, uh, from the Lord as you could get. And I uh, never even been to church. And uh, had no uh, Christian fans, friends, that kind of, you know, that kind of influence at all, uh, which is kind of hard to believe back in that time, especially, but that was where I was at. But uh, I uh, met a uh, gentleman, his wife, uh, came over and uh, had uh, supper with my wife and I. And uh, he turned out to be a, an associate pastor in the church I was uh, end up going to, but he, uh, he, uh, uh, provided a description of the gospel, which is just well, the, what the what I needed at the time. The Lord knew that I needed a very hard in my unbelief and had uh, uh, had a lot of intellectual objections, you know, the whole nine yards. And uh, so at the end of it all, I told him that I wasn't ready, which is kind of a foolish thing to say if you think about it, if you don't believe. But that's what I said. So. Uh, the Lord had me under conviction all night long, and I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I was up all night under conviction. Took a shower the next morning, ready to go to church, and uh, the Lord gave me a vision. I, I was the only way I know how to describe it, uh, but uh, I understood the relation between the Father and the Son in such a way uh, that I've I haven't had anybody give a better, you know, a, a way of describing that as I understood at that moment of time. But I understood that it was God in the flesh on that cross. And that's just broke me. And I cried like a baby and I was filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I stepped out of the shower, a totally uh, changed man. And that's how I came to the Lord. So in your vision, did you actually see something projected out or? How did the vision work? Only, only in my mind's eye, Jay. I mean, I, I, I don't really know how to describe it other than a vision. But in my mind's eye, I did see a vision of God on that cross, and you know, it's just in an instant, I saw the connection between the Son and the Father, and that they were one, and it was in fact God on that cross. And it's just a, it was like an instant of time, but uh, God, you know, stepped in, in uh, through eternity into my heart, and I've had eternity in my heart since that time. You know, stumbled and fell many way, many times along the way, you know, and uh, I've been a mis miserable failure as a Christian. And thank God this thing doesn't depend on me. You know. I mean, uh, we do what we can, you know, and our walk with the Lord, commit our, uh, commit our lives to him. But just like the disciples, we stumble and fall, you know, even after we become believers and uh, put our faith in Jesus. Did you have any other encounters with God or visions since then? Well, uh there are many uh, encounters with God. I mean, I remember shortly uh, after I was saved, I, I drove a truck uh, at that time, and I was stuck in traffic, and just the just a, the thing that would uh, get me all upset before it was like I was in another dimension. I was right there with God, and I didn't care about anything in this life, you know. So uh, that's what uh, that's what being filled with the Holy Spirit will do for you. And uh, you know, I've I've had a number of experiences like that. I mean, I, the Lord provides you with experiences early on that don't necessarily happen. You know, as you go through life. For example, 
Lord fix a flat for me in my truck. Now, I prayed in simple faith that the Lord would fix that flat. Now, the Lord doesn't do that all the time. And I wish it, I wish it was that simple. But, it, but uh, simple things like that, that the Lord will do for new believers to, uh, to let, the, let uh, that believer know that the Lord is with them throughout life in simple ways than that, like that. So what has the Lord been doing since you came to Christ? Have you been involved in ministry work, or where has the Lord led you? Well, I've been involved in a lot of uh, uh, a lot of ministry work. The Lord has put me in in uh, a lot of situations. My my uh, my ministry seems to be in the uh, in spots where uh, that are that are non traditional. For example, um, I'm kind of like a uh, force gum. I just start to get involved in things, and then it's just things start happen happening. Uh, I had a couple of like a couple of months off one time, and I decided I was going to get involved in politics. So I get so I got involved in politics ran for city council. That didn't work out, but it did lead to meeting a lot of uh, you know powerful people. And so I ended up meeting a lady by the name of Donna Peterson, who was running for Congress. And your older uh, guest will remember uh, Good Time Charlie. Uh, good time Charlie Wilson. He was the uh, subject of the, the movie uh, Charlie Wilson's War when he funded the uh, Taliban then against the old uh, Soviet Union during that war. But uh, Donna Peterson mm -hmm. was running against uh, Good Time Charlie Wilson. So here I am with no experience in politics at all. She takes a liking to me. Next time I think I know, I'm a uh, delegate to the Republican National Convention. Now, that was back when I thought, you know, there was a difference between the parties, you know, and I didn't, I didn't understand the whole, you know, New World Order thing. And I, I mean, I had a sense of it, but not the way that I do now. So uh, the next thing I know, here I am hobnobbing with, with senators and and congressmen. And, you know, I almost sat in the, the president's the presidential suite, but uh, I don't think Donna Peterson couldn't pull that off. So, so uh, and so. I connect with a lot of people who don't know anything about the Lord, you know, as far away like I was, as far away from the Lord as you can get. So I have, those are the kind of uh, experiences the Lord, uh, the Lord brings me through. And, and every time it seems like when I step into something, that kind of thing, you know, happens. And, uh, you know, the Lord puts me there for a reason. So. That's one of my books, you know, one of my many books that the Lord keeps me around long enough, you know. I mean, um, you know, the Christian Forrest Gump or something like that, that's me. But uh, things happen like that. And, uh, you know, and the, the, the book deal a little later in life, you know, and again, the rough background thing. I, 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 uh, I didn't think, you know, guys in my neighborhood didn't do that kind of thing, you know. It, I, I didn't think I was going to live that long, which a lot of people in my neighborhood didn't. So uh, I think it was Henry Ford that said, uh, you know, whether you think you can or think you can't, right? Now, at least that was attributed to him. So, uh, you know, I had that attitude that those things were impossible for me. So I, I never did it my whole life here until uh, till recently, even though, you know, that's something the Lord put it uh, in my heart long ago, or at least put the seed there. But, uh, you know, so I stumbled around and here I am, the Forrest Gump Christian writer. So working on my second book now. What was and, that? Uh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, what was the rough background you came from? Well, my, uh, much of my background and much of my childhood, I don't even remember because I intentionally blocked it out. Uh, but I, uh, my, my dad literally stayed drunk for like 25 years straight. He was, he was drunk all the time. And my mom, who was the responsible one, she was in and out, in and out of the 
insane asylums, which is what they called it back in those days. And uh, so, you know, that was, the Lord had me there for a reason. Um, I, I understand a lot about, you know, mental illness, quote unquote, crazy people uh, because of that experience. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I remember my mom, I, I must have been like five years old. And uh, she always knew when she was gonna, going to lose it. And uh, she was talking to a man, he had a, a watch here, this wore around her neck. And uh, he began uh, talking to her. And when you're a little kid, I don't know if you've ever had the experience, Jay, of being around somebody who's really just, you know, not living in this world. When you're mm -hmm. when you're around somebody like that, even though even now as, a, as an adult, you kind of get drawn in, and it seems real to you. Well, you can imagine how real it seems to me as a kid. But uh, anyway, so there she went. So that that was uh, the the kind of background. Uh, that was very early on, you know, the times I remember. And from there, uh, you know, the drugs and alcohol, I, and uh, so I grew up during the whole uh, hippie era. So I went, I took every drug known to man back then. Uh, alcohol, somehow or another, I ended up, I managed to stay out of jail by, by the grace of God. I don't know how that happened, but uh, it happened that way by the grace of God. So, uh, you know, I never, never uh, went to jail. I don't have a prison record or anything like that. I did go to jail one time, three days. That's not even on my record, uh, but uh, that's the extent of it. I, I, I tell everybody, I, I joke about that when I'm, while I'm sitting around uh, talking about my criminal background. You, you probably remember the song, uh, Alice's Restaurant. Remember when he was talking about mm -hmm. how it was all the bad guys and and they were talking about all the terrible things they, they did. And he said that that's what he was down there for. He said littering, littering. And they all went to the other side of the bench. And then when he said, and disturbing the peace, they all came back in. So I, I tell him I, uh, <laughs> So I did get I get did get expelled from elementary school. So I don't know if that counts for anything, but that's my criminal background. But I, you know, you you get the picture of where I was at. So. And then God got a hold of your life, and you turned it yeah, around. I got a hold of my life, and I was 31 years of age. So I was I was very uh, very hardened in my unbelief, but uh, so. Uh, I was very, uh, I was actually in the midst of all that, as crazy as it sounds, I was kind of a responsible person, even though, you know, at night, you know, I was, you know, going these long, uh, you know, drug induced and drinking uh, times. But uh, so I did work, though. I, you know, I started driving a truck when I was 21 years of age. And uh, so, you know, so uh, that's, that's where I was at. Lord, on the board, uh, Lord had a hard nut crack with me. So. Well, you started writing books too, because you said you've written a couple books. Um, I'm sorry, Jay. You started writing books. You've written a couple of books, haven't you? I've written a couple of books. Yeah, I. Uh, uh, I would say, let's see. It's, 2008, I, the company I worked for went bankrupt, and I decided I've had this in my heart basically all my life. I mean, I, I when I was a kid, I used to walk up and down the aisles of these uh, Barnes and Noble type stores, and and I always loved to read, but I would uh, pick up some books and I'd think, man, there's no way I could write like that. This is this, this awesome prose, and then and then. Uh, I put it down, I pick up another book, and this, of course, way back before uh, self-publishing made it easy. But the writing was so bad, I was like, man, I, if they can somehow get that book on the shelf, I know I can write too. But I never did, you know. So until, you know, I got, uh, you know, a company went bankrupt, I thought I'd just take my writing seriously, joined an awesome uh, Christian writers group, and uh, so, here I am. I started on the uh, roughway of the highway. Uh, I actually met a gentleman there 
who was a writer with the San Antonio Light newspaper. And he and uh, liked my writing style. So uh, his name was John Floyd Mills, and he wanted to write a series of novels with me. And so we started our, we didn't match our, our uh, you know, our writing style was too different. So I went off, continued with the Rough Way of the Highway project on my own. He wrote his second novel. So, uh, but I kind of went nowhere with it. And uh, what really motivated me to continue on and get the novel written was uh, John Floyd Mills died unexpectedly at a, at a relatively young age. And I thought, you know, if I'm going to get this thing done, I, you know, it's now or never. So, so I did. I, I picked it back up and, and it continued on and uh, got it published and rest is history. Are you looking for a devotional? that will radically transform your walk with Christ and revolutionize the world at the same time. Check out my latest book, Walk as Children of the Light. This book focuses on everything you need to be fully equipped and discipled in Christ. Prayer, meditation, scripture, love, gratitude, and much, much more. Available on Amazon, five-star rating. So what are the two titles of your books? The, the title of the old one, the, my first book? Yeah, the first and the second. Well, the first book is Rough Way to the Highway. Rough Way to the Highway. It is a novel about a uh, trucker with a rough background. I'm going to go figure. But uh, he uh, he comes to the Lord, though, he has an uncle, he drives the truck, comes, picks him up, kind of takes him away from all that when he's a kid. And so he has this kind of nostalgic, unrealistic view of trucking. Uh, but he, through his uncle's, uh, you know, motivating him to, he, he becomes a, a, a pastor. And he's a pastor most of his life mm -hmm. until his wife is murdered unexpectedly. And uh, so that sets off a series of events where he sells everything he owns and and hits the road and uh, you know seeks some peace of mind and some wind chill therapy. And you know, Jay, that would make for a very very boring novel. So that's the last thing that he gets. And you know, the novel progresses where he, you know, goes in search of the murderer and uh, he's involved in all these conspiracies with a lot of other people and it draws in people from all over the world. It comes, it turns to be a mass, uh, you know, uh, conspiracy, the whole new world order thing and all th those people involved. And, and he picks up a load of, uh, a load of swing and meat in, uh, Alpha, Texas, up in the Texas panhandle and heads to Chicago with it. And all this is a uh, backstory. You know, you don't, that is told throughout the novel when I'm giving you a background. Uh, but the novel opens up with him picking up a hitchhiker outside of Tampa and who nobody sees throughout the whole novel. And, uh, you know, I designed the novel in such a way that people will wonder who that hitchhiker was because they never see him or hear him. Nobody sees him except Mac, the protagonist. Um, and I won't, you know, tell you everything, you know, how the story ends, but that's, that is the novel. And, uh, I, uh, one of the other miracles that have happened is I've met a, uh, movie producer who's very interested in bringing this into, you know, making a, a movie out of it. But the, the one thing that's missing, can you guess what the problem is with that, Jay? It's with, you know, most movies. What is it, money? The financing, yeah. 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 So there, there we are. I mean, I, you know, get yeah. the financing, the movie will be made. But, uh, but I mean, more than one have, have been interested in it, you know. But uh, so that's rough way to the highway. And so my, uh, my plan was to write a sequel, and I still plan to write a sequel, actually two of them uh, in the future. And Lord willing, I'll I will, you know, if it keeps me alive long enough, but 
Uh, we know what happened. That, that novel was published in 2019. And you know what happened after 2019. You know, our whole world turned upside down. And then, you know, I, I was out there on the road and I, I watched people just uh, despair of life. And so, you know, suicides increase and, and all these, you know, terrible things. And, uh, and people just, you know, don't, we're totally lost. And, you know, even believers, you know, even believers just despair of life and then, and they, with the state of the world. And so that is what inspired me to write Sojourner's Road Poem. It's the Sojourner's Road Poem. The subtitle is a 40 day journey to the heart of God. And it's a 40 day journey, 40 devotionals, where people focus every day on the journey here back to God, rather than focusing on all this turmoil of the world. So I've gotten, you know, it's just brave reviews on it thus far. And, and so it's having the desired effect, which, for which I'm very grateful. But, uh, that uh the sojourners road home is due uh september the 12th is the publishing date it can be pre-ordered now but uh it won't be available in stores and and all mm -hmm. that until september the 12th And that's more of a devotion book than that is a fiction. devotional. Uh, yes, it's a devotional, uh, devotional slash journal. It has at each of the forty days has a uh, journal page next to it. It's is that more of a page. devotion book? It's a devotional, and it's a devotional slash journal. Each of the the forty days has the uh, devotional on the left side. You open up the book on the right is the journal page and uh, you you uh, record your progress every day you know as you journey back towards god and with your focus on god in this life instead of all this you know craziness going on in the world and we we all you know are affected by those things and uh we're all subject to to uh despair if we focus on them instead of the Lord, so that's where we're at. Have you had have you had some people that have uh, worked the 40 days and been able to write in their journal and t talk about their experience with your book? Well, that's just starting, Jay, because, uh, you know, I've just sent out the, uh, I've sent out uh, books to, you uh, the people to, you know, for review copies. And I'm getting a number of, uh, you know, outstanding uh, reviews back. I mean, the, the very first lady that I sent the book to, she said uh, she's never been affected by a devotional the way, the way she has this one. And she's been a believer for 50 years, and she's a very strong believer, too. But, uh, you know, we all struggle with that. I know I certainly have. By the time I became a believer, I, you know, I, I struggle with the, the, you know, the world sometimes, you know, being drawn into current events and thinking now all this horrible, all these horrible things going on in the world, especially now, you know, with the lockdown and all that. And, and, uh, the, uh, the journey, uh, is designed for people who, uh, uh, are often away from home, you know, truck drivers, pilots, those in the military, just those that travel and, and don't have uh, a lot of uh, fellowship. But, you know, it includes, you know, shut-ins or, you know, where a lot of us are in that position. And as, as you know, when the lockdowns happen, there's an awful lot of churches that just shut down. And uh, so all of a sudden people found themselves without fellowship. They've never, you know, really experienced that before. And uh, so... You know, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, 
help people draw back into that uh, fellowship and seeing the church for what it is, you know, the uh, the body of Christ, the universal body of Christ, you know, not a not a uh, church building, you know, depending on a, a pastor or, or that kind of thing, but so. Uh, it- as part of the 40 day challenge, getting people to step out of their comfort zone. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, I think this, uh, again, going back to this lockdown, it's just shook, shook, shook us to the core, you know, from, you know, the, the uh the church as well as the, the world you know and we're in, and at the other end of this thing now i think we're seeing a revival well we are seeing a revival obviously you know the ashbury revival and many other things going around you have the uh the jesus movie you know and so you have this dark side going on and uh, you know, so it's it's all coming to a head. You know, dark dark has been revealed. The darkness is being revealed, and uh, the light of God is also shining forth. So there's a there's a shift, uh, separation going on. You know, it's you know we, we obviously have to make a choice, and that uh, that fence in the middle is getting you know a little bit sharp. You know, it's getting whittled down. You know, you're not able to sit on it anymore. So we, uh, you know, we have to choose which side we want to be on, you know, and that's what this 40 day journey is about. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a journey back to God. And that's, that's, uh, that's the way it's always been for believers, but we really haven't focused on that. I mean, we are all sojourners in this life, you know, so, uh, it's not our permanent home. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, our, our comfort zones just disappear, basically. So, uh, you know, we can't rest here and be comfortable any longer. You know, it's not a comfortable place. And who wants to live in this world anyway? I mean, the, you know, the, as dark as it's getting, you know, who wants to focus on this world as their permanent home? So, uh, that's. It seems Amen. to me that um, it seems to me that like in the 80s and 90s, okay, you knew there was bias in the media, you knew there was some corruption in government, but you didn't really realize how bad it was until COVID hit. It's like call the blinders are off, and you really see what the media is, what the government is, what these corporations are, you know, and what's going on, and it's kind of unnerving at first. It is very unnerving. I mean, I don't, you know, I I got this way back when, you know, like I said, I was a delegate to the Republican National Convention in 1992. And I saw a lot of that that then, but I, uh, you know, this is back when uh, Bill Clinton ran uh, for the first time against uh, George Bush. And and, uh, so I, you know, I was not real comfortable with the Bushes then. But I thought the Clintons were so bad. At least I was doing some good. But you know, now now I see the darkness is is you know on both sides, and uh, both sides are controlled. You know, so it's it's a very uh, um, it's a dark game. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, so the puppet masters are back there pulling the strings. And you know we've been entertained long enough with it, and and people are waking up. You know people are waking up. You mentioned COVID, obviously that shook the world to the core. But there have been a number of events before that. The uh, the biggest one before that probably was 9/11, and uh, 9/11 happened, and then we were drawn into war. You know, uh, you know hindsight will tell us it was a useless war. Uh, that's that's did much more damage that uh, you know than well it did nothing but damage you know just set the uh, Middle East on fire and uh, created all this uh, turmoil in the world 
So 9-11 woke a lot of people up, I believe. And then, uh, you know, and people are slowly waking up and now, now you have COVID and then you had, you know, the election and you watch the president every day and you wonder, how did this happen? You know, it, it happened by increments, you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and so here we are and, and again, you have this division going on. You have the dark side, well, which is well, which people- getting darker and crazier. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's not really right left because, you know, you have people on the right that see some of these things, of course. But then you have someone like, I don't know if you've ever heard of Jimmy Dore. He says he's to the left of Bernie Sanders and he sees a lot of these things going on, yeah. like with the vaccine mandates and different things. Because there's there's essentially at least two controlling groups. There may be more, but like Big Pharma and the military industrial complex. Big Pharma pushed things like the vaccine mandates and some of these other things. And now the military industrial complex is pushing what's going on in Russia and the Ukraine, as well as all the other wars, you know, since probably Korea or whatever, you know. But there's people on all sides seeing some of these things. They do. And and then... uh... You know, I know I have friends that I've worked with for, you know, years and way back when. I'm thinking of one one uh, guy in particular. He's like in his 80s, I guess, now. But he is a diehard Democrat. And whatever the Democrats say is gospel to him. You know, and, and that tends to be, you know, stronger on that side or Democrats or Republicans, you know, are quite not not quite that bad usually, but uh, he believes everything that the media says, and I'm I'm connected with those people, so I, I see it, you know, so I'm I'm blessed in that respect, and it's fr- it used to be frustrating to me, it's not anymore because I understand, um, you know, I understand where that comes from. So, uh, but I, I see that too, you know, and, and some some people are really, you know, they they're they're difficult to reach. Uh, but and and but you're right, Jay. It's not a left right thing, you know. There there are many people who are waking up to that. But there's people in the middle, like my friend. I call him in the middle. He's kind of far left, but he's he uh, he is uh, so. Uh, Influenced by the media, he'll turn on CNN and just believe whatever they say. Even you, you talk about you know Operation Mockingbird with him, and he, it's okay as long as you you don't start talking about them influencing influencing people who are Democrats. You know, it's just, Operation Mockingbird influences everybody. I mean, I'm, just from listening to you talk, you're probably familiar with Operation Mockingbird. Uh, you know, that's the uh, Program by the CIA uh, back started in the 60s, I think, to influence the media. But, but uh, anyway, so this stuff, like you and I are openly talking about this. Every, not, you know, there are millions of people who know all this now and they know what's going on. And back to the separation that's going on right now, you know, there's there are people who are walking in the light. And I'm not even necessarily talking about believers. Hopefully they'll get to that point too. Uh, because you know God is truth, and so, uh, but people are, you know, people are just waking up to it and they're openly talking about it and tired of being quiet about it. You know, so you have this whole alternate media that's been that's developed, you know, during the whole process. So people really do uh, live in two different realities. Have you ever wondered whether the Bible was compatible? with a near-death experience. In my book, Heaven's Truth, the parallels between the Bible and the near-death experience, your faith will be strengthened while you support this channel. In Heaven's Truth, you will learn about near-death experiences and other similar experiences in the Bible. Support for the Bible contained in NDEs. A central theme that runs through both the Bible and NDEs how the NDE brings the Bible to life for these modern times. 
evidence for both the Bible and the NDE, and much more. Great book. Spillers does an excellent job weaving the relationship between NDEs and the scriptures. Five stars on Amazon, available on Amazon. It's kind of like um, a lot of people were always like, well, CNN, MSNBC is bad, but we love Fox News. And then we find out Fox News fired Tucker Carlson. A lot of people are like waking up. Oh, yeah, Fox isn't really any better than those than CNN. <laughs> No, it's, and it's just like the game with the Republicans. They they point out the you know everything that uh, you know Obama and and Hillary and now Joe Biden and and every day is a new impeachable offense, but yet nothing ever happens. You know you have all these congressional hearings, but nothing ever happens. Nobody nobody is charged with anything. You know, it's just a, the, the same old show repeated over and over and over again. And I guess, you know, you have a younger generation comes through and they, it's kind of new to them. So, so uh, you know, they just watch and play. Oh, well, something's happening this time. Something's really going to happen. We're going to have a congressional history hearing and, you know, somebody's in a lot of trouble. But there's a controlled opposition that's able to say so much and they can't go any farther past that. So. But I think that's larger than what, what's going on yeah. in the social political world is I think there is a spiritual awakening going on that's larger than any of these issues that's more profound and powerful. And that's kind of what I try to focus on is the spiritual awakening that's taking place. Absolutely. And, me, and, and you and me both, Jay, you know, we're not going to, there are no uh, political saviors on the horizon. You know, I mean, Trump came to the front, forefront, you know, in, in uh, 2016. And, uh, you know, a lot of us kind of acted like he was the savior because he openly talked about the new world order. And, and the reason he was so popular because so many people already knew this stuff, you know. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't new. It wasn't like he revealed this, and all, and, and all of a sudden everybody knowledgeable about it because people already knew it. So that's, that's where uh, that's how his uh, rise to fame and power. Now, I'm not fame, but he's already famous. Uh -oh. Lost it there for a second, but um. So anyway, uh, there are no. Uh, uh, political saviors on the horizon. We only have one savior, and and he who is who we need to focus on, and he is the light of the world. And uh, you know, back to the forty-day journey. So we need to focus on him. We're journeying back to God. We're you know, of course, to do good uh, to our fellow believers in this life, and and help them along the unbelievers as well. You know, and be a light to the world. Uh, but the world is not our permanent home, thank God. Uh, so we live in a spiritual realm. That's the only way I can I can function, Jay. I don't know about you. Uh, I have to return mm -hmm. to that, you know, myself. I, I wrote the book, but I have to remind myself of that, you know. I do the same thing every day, every day. Where can people pre-order your book? Uh, it can be pre-ordered uh, anywhere. I mean, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, you know, Books a Million or any any other site, your favorite bookstore, but it's, it's available anywhere. Uh, a Sojourner's Road Home, uh, a 40 day journey to the heart of God. Uh, I don't know if you're, my name's on the screen, uh, you know, when this is there, but Kelly Mac McCoy, you look it up and look my name up. And that's also kellymacmccoy.com with my website. And uh, it can be ordered from there. But uh, on any side, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, any of them. So uh, September 12th, I uh, appreciate those pre orders. Really helpful. Where can people reach out to you if they want to get in contact with you? 
they can contact me uh, through my website. Uh, one of the one of the good great things about having a distinctive name, Jay, is that I'm really really easy to find. Uh, you know, I've got Yahoo, I've got Gmail, I've got them all, and all Kelly Mike McCoy. But uh, you can reach it. It's the easiest thing to remember. It's just reach out through my website, and uh, you can reach me there and uh, uh, just you know write to me through there or any of the other uh, places I mentioned. But I'm I'm really easy to find. Just Google Kelly Mac McCoy, and, and you know all kinds of things will come up. But that's the name on my website, so you can contact me through there. Purchase the books through there, and uh, not hard to reach. And I appreciate so, I appreciate people reaching out as well. So what is like one final word you'd like to leave with the audience? For me? What's like one final word you'd like to leave with the audience before we close out? Well, one final word, uh, word is that uh, just remember that we're all sojourners in this life. And focus on that every day. And when times get really, really, really rough, as as they always do, for you know, for all of us, you know, we not, none of us escape that this time. But remember, again, we're sojourners, just passing through. We're just passing through, Jay. Well, thanks for being on today. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate you having me on. You have a blessed day, brother. I spent several years of my life stressed, anxious, and depressed. I needed to find something that would make my life work. For me, that was meditation. With meditation, I found the peace of mind that I was looking for. I found the happiness. And I found a way to improve every area of my life my emotional life, my spiritual life, my relationships. I was able to discover things about myself. I can give you the tools to meditate. I will walk you through the process and hold your hand. Whether you're a beginner to meditation who's never meditated, or whether you're someone who's tried meditation and it just never seemed to work, we can make it work. Meditation is something that everyone can do, and I can show you how. Check out my course on meditation.